Uh, it's about 7.27, so we have Isha at 8. Uh, I'll turn the mic over to Dr. Abu Zaid next. If he can say a few words, then we'll go uh, across the table. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. We are at a loss for words. All of us who had different levels of interaction with our dear beloved Maulana Yusuf Islahi. All we can say is, in al ayna la tadma, wa in al qalba la yahzun, wa la naqulu illa ma yarda rabbuna. The eyes they shed tears, the hearts they grieve. But we will only say what Allah is pleased with. Our <clears throat> dear beloved Maulana Islahi, my interaction with him goes back to 1978 when he first came to the US and I was a child and not a very good child, I was one of the more mischievous kids and um, my, my dear friend Sammy knows me pretty well from those times. Sheikh Islahi was a household figure for us. So. For some of us, we were born into his presence. He wasn't someone who came to us later and joined the communities. So my entire childhood, um, he was always a presence in our home, in our programs, in the early uh, programs of ICNA, Islamic Circle of North America. So my interaction with him was more like a family member, a guide, a mentor. I did not read his books. In those days, the books were in Urdu, and I'm one of those bad second-generation kids. My Urdu is not so good. Um, some of his books became translated later on, and we did learn from them. But I learned tremendously from his mannerisms, his presence, his aura. You know, you can learn from someone who writes a book, but you can also learn from someone in all of his interaction outside of the classroom, outside of the lectures. And I believe I'm not alone in saying that so many people benefited from his personality, his warmth, uh, the way he conducted himself. Um, and over the years, you know, he was someone who gave us advice. He was someone who scolded me a lot. I got in trouble with him. And I cherish those moments. Um, and I really envy towards the latter portion of his life. He became attached to our dear brother, Farooq Raza. And he had the honor of staying in his house. And to me, he's the luckiest person out of all of us because he gets to see him when he goes home. And he was around him during those moments that are outside of the masajid, outside of the classroom. And I know he can share a wealth of information, even write a book. You know, they say about scholars, Imam Malik, for instance, that, you know, you learn from someone's manners before you learn from their knowledge. But Sheikh Islahi was one of those unique gifts to the ummah, to the community. Someone who also had tremendous knowledge, his books are so valuable, his insights, the way he answered questions was so incredible. There's so much to learn from his academic work. But at the same time, his work outside of the classroom, his sense of humor, his warmth, his ability to connect with children, with, with women, with men, with every type of person is really unmatched. And there are very few people in the world that you can find that, that are like that. And you can just sit in their presence and benefit so much. Um, the last few days when I heard of his illness, the, well, and, and then his, the tragic news of his demise, the only hadith that came to my mind, and it's at the forefront of my uh, thinking, is the words of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam, طوبى لمن طال عمره وحسن عمله. Glad tidings to the one who has two things, 
a blessed life, a long life, and blessed deeds. Someone who combines longevity, which is the quantity, with the quality of the work. Many of us are not blessed with longevity. We are able to contribute in a short period of time. But the best person, as the Messenger of Allah said, is the one who is blessed not only with an ample life, a, a tremendous time period, but also a very productive life, a life full of so much barakah and blessing. And that really was Shaykh Yusuf Islahi, rahimahullah ta'ala, someone who at the age of 11 memorized Quran and began leading prayers from that, from that same year until the moment he stopped leading prayers, which was only about eight years ago, I believe. So if you do a calculation of his life, that was 75 years of leading taraweeh. Not 30, 40, 50, 75 years of finishing the Quran every year and doing tafsir and delving into the meanings of the Quran. And his books, we always quote, I've, since I was a child, I've been reading that he wrote 60 books. He's been writing nonstop. So I believe his, his, his books are more than 100 now, if you include all the pamphlets. So look at the incredible barakah Allah placed in his academic work as well. And these books, at some point, they were the most widely read books in the Urdu language in the 80s and 70s. Um, and there really wasn't books that reached a mass level audience. And then not only that, there's so many aspects of his life. If you just open the door, look at his involvement in the masajid and communities. Can you think of any other person that traveled to almost every major city in North America and that had a role in the founding of so many masajid from the masjid we're sitting in now to so many other major masajid? Not only was he instrumental in founding those masajid, but he was regularly visiting those masajid and had the chance of touring with him a uh, number of times everywhere he went in different states, whether it's California or Texas or Florida. He visited masajid and people knew him for decades. He knew their children. He knew all of these communities. He had an intimate link with these communities. We have trouble connecting with one community. This was a man Allah blessed to have an impact and a connection a real and sincere connection with thousands of people in so many different communities. So there's so much I can say, but I'll stop with that. And, you know, we all love him and we have to realize the love that we have for Shaykh Yusuf Islahi is something that Allah placed in our hearts. As we know that when Allah loves someone, he tells his angels to come down and spread the love of that person and implant it in the hearts of the believers. And I've not seen an outpouring of grief like I've seen in for Sheikh Yusuf Islahi. So many people loved him dearly. So many people had that connection. So many people considered him one of their own, their own family members. And that's something to envy. May Allah forgive him. May Allah allow us to walk in his footsteps. May Allah continue all the work that he did. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad ala alihi wa sahbihi. Imam 